Okay, and let's start tips and tricks part two. We do a lot of adding of files in assemblies and we can group or control select lots of files to add them into the list. Because we're adding several files, we can pin it. We can use the new fix and float commands in order to fix this component straight to the origin. Select our second component from the list and we could choose to float this one at the origin. And then we've got a final component to add, so I'm going to untick the pin, find our final component, and this time I'm going to float it and just click in an empty space in order to pop it down. Now we've added our components, we need to make them together. First of all, I'm going to select this uh, flat face here, uh, choose to mate. I've got the option uh, make first selection transparent, so I can click through it, use the alt key to dig through the part one mating and the G key in order to zoom in. So I can accept that mate. I'm going to rotate around here, I'm going to use the G key again in order to select the face and use the Alt key to dig through uh, in order to find my mating cylindrical face. So that's one method of mating. Another method of mating is if I select a component, I choose the component preview window. It brings up a separate view of that part on its own and allows me to rotate it round in order to select a face that I can't see in order to add this concentric and I can do the same thing again by selecting the face and uh, creating a concentric mate as well as that coincident mate. And then we can exit the preview. We're then going to copy this part. We talked about um, mate references earlier, but now we're going to use something called copy with mates. So I can select this part, we choose the next part tab, and then we've just got the mates we want to copy. So I can select my cylindrical face, I'm going to use the G key again because this face is small, and then we can add that uh, coincident. Hit the pin, hit the tick, and I can carry on adding these parts until I run out of holes. So again, we'll use the G key to zoom in to select the small face, untick the pin, and then hit tick, and we've added those parts in. Now I've got three of these parts, so I can use the tree display group component instances to stick them all together. It's kind of like a folder, but it's automatic. It's also uh, configuration aware. So if I change this configuration, that part will drop straight out of the group, and if I come back and stick it back into the configuration, it's automatically subsumed back into the group again without me having to do anything with it. Now I'm going to drag in a part from another file. You're probably all very familiar with control drag in order to copy the files. The downside of this is you can copy it inside the source file. Now if I use shift drag, I can only copy into a new window. I can use smart mates and we can see that concentric and I can use the tab key to flip the orientation of those mates. I don't want to actually put it there, so I'm going to stick it down here. We're going to create mate off these two faces using control and this is so I can show you the slot mate is on the uh, flyout manager. Now if I want to move that around, I select the file in the feature tree, the uh, triad automatically pops up so I can grab hold of it and as before with rulers we can drag it around and we can snap to those rulers to make life easier. Again, under tree display, I want to go to component name description. I've got a lot of them, I want to work out what they are, and I can turn off configuration name, turn on component description and say hide the display state if there is only one. Hit apply and we can see those descriptions being shown there. Now these are available in the feature manager search, so I can type that in, find that part, and I can choose make independent. Now this part actually already exists from the assembly on the right, so I want to create a new one. Um, so I can choose my location, give it a name and save it. Now this is better than uh, saving and replace because the part will now be replaced inside my uh, assembly where I chose the make independent, but it will keep all of its mates. So there we can see the new name and it's still in that new assembly under the new, under the new name and all the mates have been maintained. Control A to select everything and we can then come along and have a look at exploded view, something you've probably used. There's all my selected parts. And we've got auto space components where I can change how much they space. Choose add step and all those components are spaced and I can drag the slider backwards and forwards to choose how much all of those components are spaced for me. Hit the tick and then I can right click an empty space and I can choose collapse. I don't have to go to the configuration tab in order to find that. Drag in a new component, again using shift drag, and I'm going to select the end face and I want to make this into my assembly. Now I want to use a slightly different mate than normal, so I'm going to go to the advanced mates and I'm going to use profile center mate. Now this effectively, or is more often used with uh, square panels, but effectively what it's going to do is it's going to add both a coincident and a concentric mate in a single hit. Uh, and I also have the option to lock rotation as well. So it's a really nice tool. 
We're then going to come to this back part and I've got some holes in it and I want to put some fasteners in them. Now I can use a tool called Smart Fasteners where we select the hole, it finds the matching, uh, matching holes as well and it adds a predefined fastener into the holes. I can also add uh, additional washers and nuts to that uh, bolt and it will lengthen the bolt as is required. I'm actually going to do this a slightly different way. I'm going to go and grab a different fastener, stick it in the hole. Um, and while I could just use the standard toolbox uh, functionality to go and add some more, that would be boring. Let's do this a more interesting way. We're going to use a pattern driven component pattern. I can select the fastener and then I can either select the pattern in the graphics or I can go and select it in the feature tree. So let's come and grab hold of that. It helps if I pre-select the box and it's going to go and put all of those fasteners in. Now also we've got this synchronized con configuration of patterned items. That means if I change the seeds configuration, all of the patterned items will catch up. Uh, so it's just a nice way to keep on the, keep control of those. That doesn't have to be for toolbox parts. In PDM, we're all used to the eDrawings preview, but let's make it better. So under the options, we've got the show full user interface. Now this brings up measure, which is really nice, but it also brings up a cross highlighting component list in an assembly. Selecting the graphics area, shows it in the tree, selecting the tree, shows it in the graphics area. Really nice tool. Bill of materials, hover over the icons, and we get our picture previews, which is a nice way of getting them. Right click menu, all of the functions you might need, but also browse to a new window, which opens up a new window and highlights the relevant file, particularly good if your assembly is spread over lots of places. In the contains tab, we can change from showing configuration to not showing configuration, and this then shows our drawings in the contains list, which is useful. On where used, if you select all versions, it shows all of the ver or all of the links across all of the versions, which shows you a bit more information. Definitely worth making sure you remember where those are, even if you don't use them all the time. Click on the folder name, and it will refresh the folder. No right-clicking necessary. Under Tools, we also have the Report Generator. This is for PDM Pro customers, but this enables you to run predefined SQL queries just from right-click, maybe finding every revision that happened in a particular time period. Over on the right, we've got Quick Search. You should all know about this, and by default, it searches file and folder names, but it can be changed to add lots more options in. So, if we come over to Quick Search Variable Lists, we can create a new list of variables that are going to be av available when we're doing that Quick Search definitely worth configuring with the stuff you use all the time and then sharing with the relevant groups and people.